Well, hello again to all the friends and parishioners of Sacred Heart Parish in Gladwin. There's been a hubbub of activity here at the church in our renovation, and I'll just give you a tour and bring you updates. We can begin by getting a, a view from upstairs. The new fire loft. Morning, Tim. Morning. You want to explain for the people what we're doing here today? Uh, we're putting the lights up in the, the medallions. The ceiling medallions. Yeah. Freshly painted yeah. with gold trim. Sticky stuff around the sides to help hold it up. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about about what you did, Tim, to rejuvenate the, the chandeliers? Uh, put all new shades. Obviously, we had to make the shades because we couldn't find what was there, the original. Got that, reballed them, cleaned them up, and hopefully it'll be a brighter and okay. Hopefully. Better. <laughs> All right. Very good. So that's the first of 15. Right. Number one of 15, yep. Yes. Let's try something different on the next one. Hopefully it works. Yeah. Real learning curve. Yeah. These lights are As I mentioned, a lot of activity going on here today. We've got, um, I believe, four of our contractors on site right now. Finally, we have the uh, the glue, the adhesive being removed from the frazzle. That started just this morning. We plan on sh shining it up really nice, make it look just like new. Just like new back in 1961. Chandelier number two of uh, 15. Get on video. Who, who turned it on? Uh, all, right. Uh, all right, okay. All right. While we're up here, I can show you a close-up detail of some of the painting decoration that, that's been done. Also, too, uh, a, a, a perhaps a minor thing, but still, uh, we decided to do it. Uh, right behind this panel, and also on the other side as well, uh, we're exposed um, air conditioning ducting and uh, those were installed during the retrofit of the air conditioning system maybe about 20 years ago and we decided to uh, drywall them in while, while we're doing the renovation just to give it a, a more complete finished appearance. So you can see here, 
much of the uh, decoration behind the, in this case, the St. Joseph's Shrine has been done. And now the arch and the columns of the arch are being, uh, are being decorated. With the uh, underlying wood covered up. Hopefully these chandeliers will be all installed today. That's the plan. And we can hopefully soon go back to uh, using them as, as lights instead of the, uh, the temporary lights that we've been using for the last couple of months. You can see here, oh yes, what, what do we have here? All right, thank you, Jill. You can see here the windows are almost done. You got the new framing and the new arch up there. Walls have been painted along each side of the, of the nave, the full length. Let's take a look at these ceiling medallions. So the uh, gold leaf trim that you see on these is, is hand painted by one of our artists here on site named Jeff. ceiling medallions will do a lot to break up the sea of monotony of the ceiling. All that white will be uh, decorated in a very beautiful way. Okay, and I have somebody here who's going to give us an expert walkthrough on, on his role. What's your name, sir? My name is Jeff Wharton. I'm with Liturgical Arts Studio out of Philadelphia. We specialize in church restoration. All right. And what's your role here, Jeff? Okay. Well, we're doing hey, show, show us some of your, your, your craftsmanship. We're, we painted the whole place, and we had some striping, gold leaf, depending on the architecture. It's different. Like this painting over here. So we to have depth to the wall. We added boxes, gold leaf, which is going to have a stencil on top of it. You can also see around the windows. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the frame, kind of make the windows pop a little more. Mm -hmm. Also in the ceiling, striping in the ceiling. Yep. Along the entire length. Exactly. Instead of having a plain, plain ceiling, 
it's on its desk, give it some, you know, give it kind of its own architecture too. Also, the medallions that were picked out for the ceiling of Father Pig. Glazed them, antique them, gold leafed them, so that when the lights shine up, you get a nice finish. You can really see the gold pops on them. Also in the front, you get a blue, blue, blue walls and ceiling. That's what I told me that, Jeff. With the blue, blue walls and ceiling. All right. Like, have it, give it a heavenly look. Also on the side lines, you added a trellis effect with gold leaf diamonds. Okay. And we still have a few odds and ends to do. Yep. So this will be the Mary, Sh Blessed Mary Shrine? Blessed Mom, yep. yep. Okay. St. Joseph will be on the other side. Yep. And, and then uh, after the orchards go in, we have uh -huh. some, I'm going to put some words up top. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Over the arch, okay? Over the arch. And there'll be a Holy Spirit. Uh, and also the Holy Spirit. And also, I'm going to put some, going to put some gold leafing in the back behind the rear dose. Dress it up a little bit. Can you show us where that's going to be? I, I don't have that with me. I'll have that with me. That'll be, that'll be the first one. And the uh, the, the sanctuary the sanctuary is painted the light blue, sky blue. Yes, sky blue. Okay. Kind of represent heaven. The sanctuary should always be different than the rest of the church. It kind yeah. of should okay. be the main focus. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, these two windows back here are going to be blocked by the Riverdose wall. Um, these windows, to be honest, are, were just installed way too low and uh, really can't do much about that. They're still going to allow plenty of light to, to come in and it, it, it'll backlight uh, the sanctuary area, which actually is not a bad thing, but traditionally uh, lights in the sanctuary um, are mounted much higher because back in the old days the altars were so tall. And it's kind of strange that these uh, windows are so low. And my guess is uh, these were installed after the church was originally built. Otherwise, they would have been much, much higher. If you look at other churches that were built prior to the 70s, that's, that was typically the case. The, the windows would be installed up there um, so that they wouldn't uh, be blocked by the high altar. And if you want to see an example of that, just look at the cathedral in Saginaw. The windows are, are installed about uh, 10, 12 feet higher. But in any case, we are going to have plenty of lighting, so that, that won't be an issue. You see here the uh, windows in the narthex have all been framed. Uh, one thing I can't show you but is in the works are these interior doors. Here's one of them. And you've got uh, these double doors here and the counterpart one on either end there. These are all going to be replaced. Uh, seven doors altogether are going to be replaced uh, with doors that are far more substantial uh, along with um, a churchy looking window to dress this up. The problem with these doors is they're, they're they're too light and they don't really stop much sound uh, plus they, they just don't uh, uh, they don't look that good they're, they're, they're too I, I guess dated looking and so uh, these probably won't be done until the church is almost ready to be reopened but they're gonna be manufactured off-site and, and installed um, kind of close to the end of the project so can't show you them today Here's a small but important and overly looked. 
All right, I think that's about it for this update. And I want to thank once again all those who've been praying so hard for a renovation project to be a success. I also want to thank once again all those who have been participating in our capital campaign. Obviously, we could do none of this without uh, prayers and financial support. Once again, thank you all. And I will look forward to having another update video in approximately one and a half weeks from now. Thank you. God be with you.